Hi, I'm Chris Forsberg, and I've been building and racing Nissans for decades. And I'm here today to show you just how easy it is to install the new Nismo off-road high-performance suspension on your Nissan Frontier. Let's get to it. This spring and shock package is specifically tuned for the additional weight of typical overlanding equipment such as camping gear, heavy-duty bumpers, and larger, heavier tires. The front features multiple snap ring grooves in the body, which allows for different spring seat positions, providing up to two inches of front lift based on your truck's model. The large 60 mm digressive piston allows for increased dampening control for optimal on-road and off-road capabilities. The rear shocks are also tuned to accommodate any additional weight. The rear shocks feature a 46 mm monotube design with a remote reservoir that increases the shock oil capacity for greater heat dissipation and fade resistance and are designed to accommodate up to a 2 inch lift. Apply penetrating oil to the lower control arm bolts upper control arm ball joint, and lower strut bolts for a few days in a row prior to the lift install. This is especially important if you live somewhere where the road salt is used. If you are not utilizing a lift, park on level ground, firmly set the parking brake, and chalk the tires. Break the lug nuts loose while the tires are still on the ground. Do not fully loosen them until the tires off of the ground. Loosen the 17 mm nuts on both passenger and driver's side of the truck where the sway bar end meets the sway bar. This nut can be very tricky to get off as the nut on the back side of the stud has a very narrow wrench flat, so you'll need a pretty skinny wrench to hold onto the stud if it decides to spin on you. An impact wrench can be helpful here. Push the bolt towards the rear of the truck and separate. Roll the sway bar arm forward to give you more clearance during the install. Locate the nut that retains the upper ball joint to the spindle. Remove and discard the cotter pin using needle nose pliers. The upper control arm is under tension, so pull down on the control arm to loosen the 22mm nut that retains the upper ball joint to the spindle, but do not remove it. Support the spindle using wires, bungee cords, zip ties, or straps, and prevent it from falling forward and pulling on the brake lines and ABS wires when it is separated from the upper control arm. After the nut has been loosened, tap the front of the spindle at the ball joint cup with a hammer. Swing it from the front of the vehicle towards the rear until the upper ball joint pops free from the spindle. Now remove the 22 mm nut. Remember to have the spindle secured with something to keep it upright. Remove the three 14 mm nuts on top of the strut. Remove the 19 mm bottom nut using your breaker bar or an impact gun. Using an appropriate spring compressor, compress the spring until it can be rotated freely by hand. Then, disassemble the shock and spring unit. Inspect the OE parts to be reused and replace with new parts if they show significant signs of wear. Select desired lift height by seating the circlip in the appropriate circlip location. This can be set from stock height up to 2 inches of lift. Install the supplied spring seat onto the shock body as shown. Ensure the groove inside of the spring seat fits over the circlip of the shock body. Improper installation will cause permanent damage to the shock. Install the supplied lower washer with the concave side down onto the stem of the shock. Install the supplied sleeve onto the stem of the shock as shown. Using an appropriate spring compressor, compress the supplied coil spring enough to safely assemble it with the new shock. Place the OE upper top plate and the spring isolator onto the top of the spring and install the new unit onto the spring through the center of the OE upper mount. Install the supplied upper bushing onto the stem of the rod. Install the provided new lock nut and tighten to 30 foot-pounds. Do not use an impact gun to tighten this nut. Rotate the shock so that the lower mount is aligned with the upper mount studs. Slowly release the spring compressor while ensuring that the lower shock mount remains aligned with the upper mount studs. Install the assembly onto the vehicle and tighten all fasteners to the vehicle's manufacturer specifications. 22 foot-pounds on the top nuts and 98 foot-pounds on the lower nut. Check the wheel alignment and if necessary, adjust to the manufacturer specifications. To remove rear shocks, remove top and bottom bolts. Before installing the shock and external reservoir assemblies onto the vehicle, use the supplied piggyback hardware to mount each reservoir to its shock body. Note that the reservoir position for the driver's side, the left, is different for the crew cab and the king cab models. On the crew cab models, position the reservoir for the driver's side to the rear. On king cab models, position the reservoir for the driver's side to the front. The position of the reservoir for the passenger side is the same for the both crew cab and king cab models. Position the reservoir 
for the passenger side to the front. The hose fittings are designed to swivel and will allow the reservoir and hose to be easily moved. Tighten the clamps sufficiently to prevent the reservoir from slipping, but loose enough to allow for small subsequent adjustments of position. The clamps will be tightened further once the shock and reservoir assembly is installed on the vehicle and the proper reservoir position has been confirmed. Center the position of the reservoir evenly to the upper shock body, approximately 3 quarters of an inch above the bottom side edge. Install the upper and lower ends of the shock absorbers and attach the upper and lower mounts. Temporarily hand tighten. If a chassis hoist is being used, be sure to lower the vehicle such that its full weight is on the suspension prior to fully tightening the fasteners. Retorque the upper and lower fasteners to the manufacturer's specifications. Carefully check for any possible dynamic interference between the reservoirs and any other components of the vehicle, specifically the e-brake cable, leaf springs, or the spare tire. The reservoir mounting locations depicted herein are appropriate for this application. However, some aftermarket components, such as tires and or lift kit combinations, may create interference problems. It is the responsibility of the installer to determine if the reservoir is mounted appropriately and if there is any potential for interference. If no potential interference is found, tighten the clamps until the reservoirs cannot be manually moved independent of the shock body. You have now completed the Nismo Off-Road High Performance Suspension Install.